Oh my goodness, what kind words. Thank you so much, Mike, I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you all for being here. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. It is particularly exciting for me to see Tulane University host this annual event highlighting the success of women from our Tulane family. I'm inspired by the women who are sharing their insights with you today and about the opportunities each of you will have to earn your own successes in the future, hopefully in New Orleans. I was asked to speak to you about the challenges I have been faced with over the past year in assuming ownership of the New Orleans Saints and Pelicans and the other businesses my husband and I have been involved in over the years, particularly as a woman in what has traditionally been a male-dominated industry. While those challenges and responsibilities are great, my approach to being a business leader was not formed over the last year, but over the decades I spent building my own businesses here in New Orleans. The lessons learned and principles adopted over the course of those difficult, often frustrating, and ultimately rewarding years are what continue to guide me today. While the businesses I am responsible for today are of a much higher profile and significantly more valuable than the ones I built earlier in my career, I can tell you that I have found the business philosophy I developed over those years to be just as useful to our franchises as other business ventures today. The most obvious elements for success are hard work and determination. While obvious, those qualities are often the easiest to maintain when things are going well, and all too often abandon when times get tough. My husband's favorite saying was, tough times never last, but tough people do. One of the things that Tom said he admired about me was that I shared his work ethic and flat out stubbornness when it came to being successful. I learned early on that no matter what business you were in, you were competing with someone else in that industry and I was determined that I would never lose an opportunity to someone because they worked harder than me. I could accept it if a prospective client chose a competitor because they preferred their design, but it would never be because I failed to meet a deadline, provided an incomplete plan, or didn't promptly return a call. I was resolute that anything I presented would be more detailed, thorough, and comprehensive than any competitor. I understood that I may not get their business every time, but I knew I was making a good impression on them, and I believed it would pay off with a future opportunity. Certainly, there have been plenty of times when I didn't get the business. The reality is failure is part of life and part of business. There were clients I didn't get. There were some lean times when things didn't go my way. Similarity, we lose games we shouldn't. And other times, we just get beat because the other team simply played better. We even lose games when officials blow the most obvious of calls. <laughs> Bouncing back from those failures especially when caused by forces or officials beyond your control can be tough. I believe resilience is something that doesn't necessarily come natural to most of us, but it is a trait that has to be worked at constantly and strengthened over time. My resilience has been largely fueled by my faith and inspired by my hometown, New Orleans. Earlier, I mentioned my hope that many of you will choose to pursue your dreams here in New Orleans. I would like to take a minute now to make my pitch. If you are affiliated with Tulane, 
You probably already have a love for New Orleans and its unique culture. The more time you spend here, the more I hope you see that New Orleans isn't just a great place to get a top flight education while having a whole lot of fun. Don't get me wrong, I hope you do both. What makes New Orleans such an iconic place to visitors? The food, the architecture, the diverse neighborhoods, Mardi Gras, Jazz Fest, the French Quarter. All are special qualities that we are very proud to share with the world. What makes New Orleans so exceptional to me, however, is the resilience of our community and the way we respond to challenges and tragedies. What makes New Orleans great, plain and simple, are the people. It is common for communities to rally together in times of crises. What I believe is unique to New Orleans is how we respond, with a sense of humor, optimism, and often a party. Following Katrina, many across the country and the world believe New Orleans was finished. While an unprecedented disaster with heartbreaking results, there was never any doubt in my mind that New Orleans spirit was not broken and we would come back stronger than ever. It didn't take long for some of the more depressing and frustrating aspects of Katrina's aftermath to become punchlines and easy picking for the more satirical Mardi Gras groups. Recovery was difficult, but as expected, was most often accompanied by good humor and the more than occasional party. We saw another example of our special response to tragedy and grave injustice earlier this year. I am referring, of course, to the infamous no call in the NFC champion game against the Rams. In all seriousness, had this happened in another city, it is likely there would have been riots in the streets. As bitterly disappointed as our fans were, their response was the opposite. Rather than riot, our protests turned into another cause for parties. <laughs> we had boycott bowls, they sprang up throughout the city on Super Bowl Sunday, and our fans' displeasure with the obvious, terrible no call was expressed to the NFL by tuning out at a historic rate, delivering the lowest Super Bowl rating in the country by a wide margin. Just two weeks after that crushing result, our fans were throwing a party in the streets rather than rioting in them. The spirit of irrelevant resistance makes New Orleans a wonderful place to pursue a rich life and career. It is what made New Orleans one of the best markets in the U.S. for young entrepreneurs, one of the fastest growing tech hubs, and a top three city for women in tech. While there is much we have to work on in New Orleans, there is no place like it in the world when it comes to balance of opportunity and lifestyle. I hope you will all consider being a part of our future and contributing to a city that is truly like none other. One of the reasons I never miss an opportunity to promote New Orleans is because it is something I so honestly believe in. Honesty is, perhaps, the single most important factor in building and maintaining a successful business. Again, it seems like a simple and obvious point, but when I talk about honesty, it is not being honest, it is not just about being honest with your customers and those you work with. The most important thing, and sometimes most difficult thing, is being honest with yourself. When things are going well, it can be easy to pat yourself on the back, but it can be a little more humbling to take the time to really analyze the success and give proper credit to those whose efforts led to that success. When we win games, 
It is because of the work and commitment of our players, coaches, front office, and staff. While it is my job to provide leadership and the resources necessary to compete, they are the ones putting it all on the line every game. I try to make it a point to always thank and give credit to those who deserve it. This is particularly important when it comes to those who don't often publicly get recognized for their contributions. I want those people in particular to know how much I appreciate them and what they do to help us win. It can be even harder to be honest with yourself when times are tough. It's easy to blame others or make excuses, but when you are in charge of the business, you must accept that you are accountable for the results and ultimately have the responsibility to take action when the business is not as successful as it should be. When it comes to our teams, defining success is very simple. It's all about winning. While we have created a great winning culture with the Saints, we have unfortunately not seen the same results with the Pelicans. Anthony Davis's request to be traded was disappointing and our play on the court has been frustrating for all of us. It would be easy to blame injuries, the current NBA dynamics, favoring larger market teams, or other factors for both Anthony's decision to leave and our lack of on-court success. Some of those excuses might even be valid, but we have to challenge ourselves to dig deeper and face some basic truths. For whatever reason, we have not created a culture that fosters a consistently winning franchise. The way we have been operating has not worked, and we have not adapted to the realities of today's NBA. As a result, we are now in the process of evaluating and restructuring our entire basketball operations department, not just searching for a new general manager or coach. We are aggressively analyzing what makes other organizations consistently successful in other sports and businesses. Speaking to a broad range of accomplished NBA personnel and we have enlisted outside consultants to help us build an organization that can compete for championships in today's NBA landscape. While this is necessary, it is also very difficult, as the changes will likely mean, and have already resulted in, having to let go of people I greatly respect and who have worked as hard as they could to win. I must be honest with myself, however, and make these painful decisions because my ultimate responsibility is to our fans. The absolute hardest part of owning these teams or any business is the reality that you will eventually have to let people go who you like, respect, and admire. On the positive side, the best part of owning the Saints and Pelicans are the personal relationships I have been blessed with to share with so many players, coaches, staff, and fans. I see my role as a steward of a community asset rather than an owner of two teams. This is one of my primary reasons that my husband and I have been so focused on philanthropy in New Orleans. I will never be able to properly thank our community for everything they do to support us and for how kind they have been to me, particularly after my husband's death. I want to make sure through our foundation that we help our community thrive as much as possible. The relationship between the Saints and fans is truly unique in all of sports. It is family. Players who join us from other teams think they understand the passion of our fans from their experience 
playing in the dome as a visiting team. What surprises them once they live here, though, is how that passion burns so brightly throughout the year, not just on game days. The players absolutely love it and feed off it. Our coaches think about it and game plan for it, and they figure how they can use our fans' energy and noise to win every game. When we win, our fans very rightfully feel like they played a critical role in the victory. What drove me to make the public comments following the critical missed call in the NFC Championship game was that I felt our fans, coaches, and players deserved better. Certainly, I was terribly upset and disappointed, but I was heartbroken for our fans and our team. The NFL does not like for owners to criticize officials or the league publicly, but I felt someone needed to defend our fans and team and to try and find a way to make sure that it never happens again. The fans are just so devoted to the Saints and we feel equally devoted to them. While we are not quite there yet, we are working hard to create that same relationship between the Pelicans and the fans. Investing time and effort in building personal relationships has been critical to my success. From my earliest days in business, I have made it a point to send handwritten notes to customers, prospective customers, and others I work with. If there was an article written about a client, I would clip it out and send it to them with a very small note. I continue this practice to this day and set aside time every day to write notes. I have friends that laugh at me. They say I send notes in response to the thank you notes they sent me. <laughs> I have found that everyone from Pro Bowl quarterbacks to governors appreciate the gesture. More than the note itself, I think people appreciate that you are thinking about them and willing to invest the time in sending them the note. If I could offer one suggestion to all of you, especially in today's communication climate of tweets, texts, and emojis, it would be to take the time to invest in making personal connections with those you work with, your family, and your friends. It may not be necessary by in the form of writing them a note, but committing yourself to making the effort to develop those relationships in little ways, it will pay dividends. Finally, I was asked about how I navigate being a woman in a traditionally male-dominated industry. My approach is very simple in that regard. My focus has been on earning the respect of my fellow owners through my actions and work on behalf of both leagues. When assuming ownership, I made it very clear that I wanted to be involved in the most important matters impacting the leagues. I wasn't interested in being assigned to minor committees and showing up to meetings simply to chat and visit. Fortunately, the NFL was very responsive and I was named to three committees, the Business Ventures, the Hall of Fame, and the Audit. I am pursuing similar responsibilities in the NBA. I am not minimizing the challenges women have faced in the business world and will be the first to acknowledge that as much as things have improved, there is still more work to be done. I have, however, always believed that if you work harder than anyone else and kept knocking on those closed doors, more will open and will earn the respect and trust of those behind them. I also believe that when, you, when those doors do open, it's important to make sure they stay open for others in a similar position. When it comes to the businesses that I am involved in, diversity and inclusion is an absolute expectation. That is the case not just because it is morally the right thing to do. The fact is that it has become proven to be good for business. A diverse workplace leads to diversity of thought 
and experience. It's as simple as that. The more people see how that positively impacts their bottom lines, the more committed businesses will be to be diversity and inclusion, and I'm optimistic about the expanded opportunities being created. In closing, I would like to remind all of you how many of those opportunities are available right here in New Orleans. It has been a pleasure to be part of this wonderful event, and I would like to thank again Tulane for inviting me and allowing me to share some of my experiences. May you all receive continued blessings. Thank you very much.